Since last year, the animal rights group PETA, or People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, have once again been attracting national media attention with a new vegetarian campaign aimed specifically at Christians. It promotes vegetarianism using the somewhat controversial idea that Jesus Christ was in fact a vegetarian. PETA is a non-profit organization and has an annual budget of $12 million. With a membership of 600,000, it is the largest animal rights organization in the world. PETA spends $1 million a year for its vegetarian campaign. Bruce Friedrich is the vegetarian campaign's coordinator for PETA. For the vegetarian campaign, we have a variety of projects, and we focus on the environmental impact, the health impact, and, of course, the animal welfare impact. The first PETA billboard went up last December directly across from the predominantly Christian Oral Roberts University in Oklahoma. Other billboards soon followed, including one in Saskatoon, Canada, during the Saskatchewan Pork Expo. Another billboard was placed in Amarillo, Texas. You might recognize this place as home to the famous beef anti-defamation lawsuit, which was brought against Oprah Winfrey in 97-98. Not surprisingly, the community in Amarillo reacted quickly to the billboard's message. Story tonight, a controversial billboard is taken down almost as quickly as it went up. Earlier this week, we told you about a billboard sponsored by the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, or PETA. It One billboard was posted in St. Louis in January, just in time for the visit of Pope John Paul II. The idea behind the campaign came from one of the leaders of the Catholic Church. During the National Conference of Catholic Bishops in 1997, one of the U.S. Cardinals, Adam Maida, wanted to have a reaffirmation of Meatless Fridays. The suggestion inspired Bruce to write to all of the U.S. Catholic bishops, asking them to seriously consider making vegetarianism a part of the Christian way of life. So we wrote to all of the Roman Catholic bishops and we said, hey, you know, what about people living their faith day in and day out? rather than just on Fridays. And what about making a vegetarian option as a strong statement of affirmation for vegetarianism for Catholics and Christians? I mean, we got a lot of letters from U.S. Catholic bishops saying, we believe in mercy toward animals. We believe in compassion for animals. We believe that animals are part of God's creation and that they are beloved by God. We've had unanimity, 100%, that we shouldn't be cruel to animals, that we shouldn't torture animals. Well, I would ask people, watch the videos we've got. You know, we'll show it to you. They're torturing the animals. They're cruel to the animals. PETA makes the argument that Jesus, like many religious leaders throughout history, was an advocate of kindness and mercy, and that this outlook was in no way meant to be limited exclusively to human beings. They cite specific biblical proofs. In the Christian tradition, what we have is a Jesus who is the Prince of Peace. And it's important to remember where that comes from. It comes from the prophet Isaiah. And the Prince of Peace in Isaiah 11 is ushering in God's new age of nonviolence. If we read Isaiah 11, the holy mountain is filled with the knowledge of the Lord, where even the lion lies down with the lamb, and there is no bloodshed whatsoever. Peter also cites the Last Supper as proof for Jesus Christ's vegetarian lifestyle. This traditional Jewish meal of Passover would have typically included lamb. According to the Bible, Christ and his disciples took only bread and wine. Other instances are Christ's condemnation of animal sacrifice at the temple in Jerusalem, and even his birth in a Bethlehem manger surrounded by adoring animals. The New Testament scriptural evidence of the historical Jesus was a practicing vegetarian is very, very strong. And we offer all of that evidence on our website. Um, brass tacks, though, even if Jesus wasn't a vegetarian, Christians have to ask ourselves, what does it mean that animals are treated as so many inanimate objects today? What does it mean that chickens are given less space per bird to live their lives than an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper? that they're crammed by the tens of thousands into these sheds, cooped in their own feces, that their beaks are seared off without any kind of anesthetics, seared off with a hot iron, so that many of them starve to death because eating becomes so painful, that they're crammed under the back of these transport trucks by the thousands, off to the slaughterhouse they go, through whatever weather extremes, many of them dying, and they're hung upside down, and that they have no legal protection whatsoever. Now again, if we did this to dogs or cats, Christians would be horrified. 
If a kid hurts an animal, their parents will say, that's not nice. Stop that. Even that's not Christian. We all understand that it's unchristian to hurt an animal. But we suspend reality when we sit down to eat. We want some chicken nuggets. You know, and it's killing us, and it's destroying the environment, and it's patently immoral, whatever your faith background. The notion that Jesus was a vegetarian may set an example not only for Christians, but for anyone who sees him or herself as a kind and merciful person. Leonardo da Vinci said, I have no doubt that one day all human beings will look back on this murder of animals in the same way we presently look at the murder of human beings. So it's inevitable. And the question is, what can we do to make it come about more quickly? PETA publishes its research and activities on its website, www.petaonline.org, and specifically for its vegetarian campaign, www.jesusveg.com. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. Genesis 129.